Hello, lovely people. I feel like I um, haven't sat down to share a movie with you guys in a little while. Um, so yeah, here we are. <laughs> Today um, we are talking about American Gigolo from 1980. So this one's a little bit of a treat for you um, 80s fans out there. This film is very, very 80s, even though it came out in 1980. It's definitely um, got the sound and the look and the general aesthetic of um 80s bigness <laughs> is bigness a word probably not who cares um yeah so i don't know if anyone sort of needs this warning but um this the film we're talking about is rated 18 plus um i'd say by like it's nothing that you wouldn't see on like hbo or anything but uh we are talking about some sexy stuff today um <laughs> So yeah, Richard Gere is the star of this film. He plays a gigolo called Julian, a male prostitute working in LA, and he's living some kind of a dream life. He's super charming. He's super on top of his game. He earns the big bucks. He has the Blondie soundtrack. <laughs> he's um, he's uh, in demand. <laughs> and all throughout this movie, like when he's like driving his expensive sports car around and like it's very 80s shaped car if you know what I mean um that blondie song call me call me <laughs> it's playing like the whole time it's great I love it um but anyway one night he goes to a, a job and it's not um it's not like his normal stuff so normally he says no to um homosexual encounters and he says no to anything that's kind of violent or aggressive or anything like that but this client is into s m so he's very uncomfortable but he goes through with it and then later the woman is found murdered so the police are after him and suddenly he realizes his life was just a house of cards because nobody's really on his side and nobody will help him except for one woman so michelle played by lauren hutton she's the wife of a senator and she's not a client she's sort of just fascinated by how he makes sort of how he makes his money how he lives his life and who he is and she's really like the only person that looks beyond the surface so he sort of tries to keep it light and she kind of um asks the hard questions i guess um so yeah, this film is basically just famous for having one of the first full frontal nude shots of a male star in a mainstream film. Um, so there's a scene where you see all of Mr. Gear um, or all of Mr. Gear's gear. I don't know. <laughs> Whatever. Um, it's really not, you don't see much. It's really not that shocking. Um, but in 1980, that was a big deal. So this film was directed by Paul Schrader. Um, he's one of the, what is apparently called the movie brat generation, which I think is adorable. So if you remember the um, brat pack in the eighties with, um, you know, basically the cast of the breakfast club and, and a bunch of those kind of actors, um, the movie brats of the directing world were people like Spielberg, Scorsese, Coppola, and Lucas. Before um, sort of looking into the backstory for this film, I actually didn't know that they were considered like their own little brat pack of directors, movie brats. I kind of love that. I think that's really funny because to me, they're like these beardy guys that wear ball caps and um, made a bunch of great films, but I didn't kind of know, obviously they're contemporary, but I never had them called that. So he's one of them. Um, he's a little bit different in tone than like Spielberg and Scorsese and stuff. He came from a really strict um, religious background. I think his family were Calvinist and he didn't actually watch a film until he was a young adult. He was about like 18, I think. And um, he'd never seen a film. And then he went on to study movies and stuff. His um, influences on his films are a bit more European and Japanese more than other like american directors although obviously that that's an influence as well but um 
In case you're trying to place him, he is the director of Taxi Driver with uh, Robert De Niro. Um, he didn't direct that, but he wrote the script for it, and that kind of put him sort of front and center and enabled him to enabled him to uh, start his career. So uh, he also has a film out later this year called The Card Counter, which stars Oscar Isaac and a few other people, obviously. Um, so yeah, he's still um, still active today. So this film, um, he made some films that he called like double bookends, which kind of doesn't make sense because I'm not sure where the double part comes in because bookends already come in a pair. But anyway, <laughs> we won't like split hairs. It's just maybe I'm missing something. Um, so there are four films. Uh, Taxi Driver is bookended by a film called Light Sleeper. So it has like similar themes and stuff. And American Gigolo is bookended by a film called The Walker. The Walker is basically um, what he imagined would have become of the main character of this, Julian, you know, later in his life. Um, I've never seen The Walker and I don't think that it has a great, um, sort of following or whatever. Um, so I can't see myself watching that in the near future, but, um, yeah, it's basically what, uh, he thinks would have become of Julian later in life. This film, uh, American Gigolo was influenced by Bresson's 1959 film The Pickpocket and the ending of this film is basically we'll say lifted as opposed to stolen <laughs> from the ending of that film so um, yeah it's like just a little interesting fact for you there um, I think something interesting about this film that I didn't really see much when I was looking up like not loads of stuff came up but um there's a sort of gay subtext to this film because he is, um, there's a couple of things that he says or a couple of situations that he's put in where you get the impression that, uh, Julian may have worked as a prostitute working like with men, if you know what I mean. Um, whereas now he just works with women. So, it's kind of interesting it's not like majorly explored which gives it this kind of like slight mystery there's also a mention that um later in the film where he's trying to bargain and he sort of says you know i'll do like whatever like i'll i'll do um you know gay or straight whatever and so it's kind of this thing where i think maybe at the time they couldn't go into this but there's a bit of a subtext going on of like um not i wouldn't say that maybe we're not sure if he's straight or not but I think you could certainly argue it um and it's just kind of an interesting thing because we tend to see women play prostitutes it's unusual for a man to be in this position of power leveraging like if somebody's paying him for sex then he's not in control of the situation they are but um so there's like a shifting power thing he's very like hyper masculine in that he wears the suits and he drives the cars and he's got the money and he kind of he's very flattering and charming towards the women around him and he dictates terms a lot with people that he has like a business arrangement with so f i didn't feel like he was um emasculated in any way and so I think it would be really interesting to see somebody who um, studies films from that perspective of like masculinity in films take a look at this film because I think um, it kind of has some interesting things going on that it kind of have layers um, so yeah personally I don't really <laughs> feel like particularly going into that and studying it I just kind of was curious about the film and watched it and whatever you know but um yeah lauren hutton is in this film i love her she was a model um she was on the cover of vogue like 25 times and she turned to acting um this she has a couple of credits before this film but this is sort of the one that was supposed to help her break through into um you know big headline 
movies and stuff. Um, she's in a really good film from 1978. Well, I think it's really good. It's a little hard to find. I think it might've been made for TV. It's called Someone's Watching Me. And if you can get it, I recommend it. I think it's kind of got this great 70s style and she's really watchable. And that was written and directed by John Carpenter who did um, Halloween movies and stuff like that. So yeah, there's a little side note for you. Um, this did help launch her career to some extent, but um, I think she had a talk show like later. She didn't do a lot of great stuff in the rest of the 80s. Um, I just really like her. I find her super watchable. She has an interesting face. Um, she definitely has like the sort of tall like model's body. So um, I don't know, she looks good in clothes. Like that's always kind of, for me, I always love costuming and stuff. So um, I find her interesting from that perspective. But she has this little gap in her front teeth. And so it just gives her face like some kind of like individuality and like, I don't know. I just think she's great. And um, I think she's a pretty good actor. Maybe like she could have done more with her career if she had a different break or whatever, you know. Um, it also, she's Michelle, sorry. Um, Michelle is the wife of the senator and she's kind of the love interest of the film. She's the one that's like she's kind of wholesome, I guess. She's not just, you know, using him and paying for sex. I don't think she actually pays for sex through the whole movie. She, um, is kind of like interested in like who he is and kind of just enamored with this whole situation that he is. <laughs> um, so yeah, Hector Elizondo is also here. He would appear with Richard Gere in Pretty Woman and Runaway Bride. So I just thought I'd give him a little mention because I quite like him. Um, so yeah, th the film is kind of, I guess you could say it's neo-noir. Um, it's definitely got an 80s look and colors and style. And there's like that classic thing that to me is so 80s movies where somebody stands next to some Venetian blinds and there's like this lighting with Venetian blinds. To me, that's like, I don't know what it is, but that's the 80s to me. Um, and yeah, it's very like big hair, big suits, um, the obsession with sort of money and status and um, material things, you know, that kind of thing. Um, but the plot, once it kind of gets going, is about this this murder and him trying not to, he's trying to maintain this balance of like not shopping out his um, clients, but the police are onto him and he starts to realize he's been framed, which is very um, film noir, that kind of plot line. Um, but instead of there being a femme fatale, I guess Lauren Hunt is kind of the opposite of that. So it's kind of interesting. Um, yeah, so the film was originally meant to star John Travolta, which I think is intriguing because I think around this time, John Travolta still had that kind of Saturday night fever. Um, I feel like he's able to do like a, a softness, but I think Richard Gere has like this kind of very Richard Gere warmth and charm that's like uniquely his, which I think brings something to this film. And I think John Travolta would have brought something quite different, which would have really changed the tone of the whole thing. So I think that kind of stuff's interesting. Um, that was a bit of a thing for a while. Uh, Travolta turned down Officer and a Gentleman, Days of Heaven, and Richard Gere took on both of those. And I think there's a couple other films as well that um, Richard Gere uh, took on that were originally sort of Travolta was attached to them. Um, Chevy Chase was also considered apparently for this film. I have no idea. I mean, that's just, I'm kind of almost wondering if that can be true. Like, <laughs> that would have been such a different film. Um, so yeah, I think it's kind of intriguing how much a different actor will bring a different tone to a film. I think Travolta has a kind of showiness and Gear has like a more quiet self-possession self -possession that's kind of, neither of those would be wrong for the part, but it would, it's sort of, gives us a slightly different meaning um i think the it's interesting because 
Richard Gere said he was drawn to this film partly because of the gay subtext. He was kind of like, I'm a little bit like, this isn't my wheelhouse. And I, you know, was trying to grow himself as an actor. Um, and he also talked about the, the nude scene, the famous nude scene. And I think those kinds of things were very intriguing in the eighties. They're probably still intriguing now, but I mean, they were a bit kind of pushing the boat out into like uncharted waters, you know? And I think a lot of people would have gone to see this film just because of that 18 plus rating. And there's a kind of sensationalist sort of thing to this film, which kind of hides that there's maybe not that much to this movie. The 80s success is pretty great. There's a lot to look at in this film. It sounds good. It has, you know, a model in it. And like, you know what I mean? It's kind of like this very like, oh, we're going to see all these sex scenes and like, you know what I mean? Kind of risque and all this kind of stuff. Um, But uh, Ebert said something really interesting. And I think this kind of sums up how I feel about it a little bit as well. Um, He said the whole movie has a winning sadness about it take away the story's sensational aspects and what you have is a study in loneliness. And I'm like, yeah, that's what I got from this. So some people talk about how uh, Julian's kind of a narcissist and is just coasting through life and stuff like that. And then uh, Michelle gets through to him. And I didn't really see this kind of narcissistic side to him. I felt like he was more naive and just caught up in um, his sort of reputation and and that kind of thing um i liked that his character seemed to genuinely like women i feel like sometimes we almost we see a lot of it's not that he's not masculine or that he can't be sort of assertive but he's not like dominating other people when he's in business mode he's like really flattering and very charming and when he's talking about money and like i don't know stuff to do with the business side or whatever he's very sort of cutthroat and i'm like i feel like that's kind of interesting i didn't see the the narcissism um yeah because i think there's a, a couple of times where he um he does things so that the female clients he's with don't kind of get exposed as having paid him or, you know, that kind of thing. Um, you get the impression that he's never writing notes to write some tell all novel later on, you know, I feel like he genuinely, you know, likes and respects women. I don't know. He doesn't want to do any, um, aggressive stuff in the bedroom and that kind of thing. I don't know. Um, but that was just my, what I sort of took from it. Um, I think the thing about that is that he seems to think that they genuinely like him and not just the way he makes them feel or look or, you know, like I think to the women that are his clients, he's maybe a bit of an ego boost or whatever, but they're always aware that they're paying him. And I think from his perspective, sort of what I got was that he thinks that they genuinely like him and that when everything kind of goes wrong, they're so quick to just drop him and no one will help him except for Michelle. So yeah, I, I don't know if this is sort of something that Richard Gere brought because for some reason, I don't know if this is true, but I get the impression that he's very nice and that sort of niceness comes across in this movie, I think. And I don't mean that in the sense of being a pushover nice. I mean, nice as in like, he seems like a kind of, reserved but warm person who doesn't take crap from people but he seems like he'd be kind I don't know so I feel like that's what he brings to his roles and um yeah that's kind of what I got here but I do think that he has stuff but none of his stuff says anything about what he really likes it's all you know the car to impress people, the apartment to impress people. There's no, um, you know, little knickknacks that show like what he likes or what his taste is or what, um, where he's coming from or, you know, his personal life. He doesn't seem to really have one. And that's the loneliness that I kind of, that, um, Ebert mentioned. And I kind of agree with that. 
Um, all of that said, the film's basically a big melodrama. And um, I don't have a problem with that. It's the 80s. It's all good fun. Um, but I do think it's a bit of a wobbly film. Like, it kind of starts off with setting up the character for us, and that works really well. And then this plot line of the murders kind of, like, it just seems really maybe unrealistic or something. Like, it's just big, you know, big feelings, big drama. First it's this, now it's that. He's being framed. Nobody loves him anymore, you know, all this kind of stuff. And it just feels like the film's a little bit unsure in that middle section, and it just is hiding it under just all this charming stuff, you know, like this charming actor who's charming you and all of the the trappings of wealth and all this kind of stuff and then the ending is literally lifted from another film so in reality i think the film is banking on people in the 80s or in in 1980 specifically going to see it because of that 18 plus rating i think you would have been very drawn into the the showiness of it and like the sensational aspects And I think now you tend to see, like, well, what is this film trying to say? (laughs) In essence, it's not really trying to say much at all. Um, So, yeah, I don't know. I kind of recommend it. I enjoyed watching it. I was like, this is fun. I had a good time. I loved the the vibe and the Blondie song. And um, it kind of made me want to watch more Richard Gere movies, to be honest. I was like, I want to just, you know, see what he was up to. And I don't know. I like him. I think he's pretty good. Same with Lauren Hutton. I would definitely um, like to have seen more of her. I don't think she did loads of stuff. She was in TV and stuff. So it's a bit of a shame. Um, But there is actually talk of a TV series being made of this movie. So we shall see. It's, uh, I think, was meant to come out this year. Um, I haven't actually heard anything more about it, but I did come across that when I was um, doing a little research um so we shall see that'd be kind of interesting to see what they do with something like that because i think they don't have to sort of things are much more open now and i mean you just see everything on channels like hbo or whatever so i think it would be quite a different series it'd be really interesting to see what their plan is and stuff like that i don't know if it's something i would watch but i am interested to see you know what it's all about and if they set it you know now or in a different city like not in LA or I don't know it could be intriguing um but you know with COVID and everything I'm not really sure um if it's still gonna be a thing um but yeah thank you for coming along with me with this film I was kind of unsure about whether I should review it or not I just kind of wanted to share it with you guys and then I was like oh but it's got like 18 plus stuff in there so hopefully um Hopefully you'll be able to watch this. I don't know. I'm not sure um, if they'll if YouTube will have a problem with it. Hopefully not, because um, it's all quite harmless. <laughs> so yeah, that's American Gigolo from 1980, with uh, directed by Paul Schrader and starring Richard Gere and Lauren Hutton. And um, yeah, that's it. <laughs> I'll talk to you guys again soon.